Welcome to the Dice Tower's coverage of the Gamma Trade Show 2013, aka Tom and Eric Go to Vegas, in which we bring you the latest board game news from the show. Hey folks, welcome to the next video in a series that we took at the Gamma Trade Show 2013, where Eric Summer and I had a chance to talk to a lot of publishers. Uh, it's taken a while to put all the video together. In the last video, we looked at WizKids. In this video, we're going to take a look at several publishers. Now, we didn't have a chance to talk to every publisher that was there. It was just too busy, uh, just wasn't enough time, so we talked to as many as we could. Uh, almost kind of picking them haphazardly or just as we ran across them. So in this video, we're going to watch and hear about some more publishers. And we're going to start with a designer that we talked to, Mike Elliott. And he's going to tell us a little bit about what he's designing for AEG. Yeah, so uh, AEG uh, started doing these little single deck card games. Uh, they did a game called Love Letter uh, back at Essen that was fairly popular for them. Uh, so over the years, I've kind of done uh, a number of these single deck card games, and uh, I'll come up with an idea for a card game, and I'll, I'll finish it, and I'll go, great, that's great, and it'll immediately go into my garage, because like even successful single deck card games are, are usually uh, not, not like huge. Uh, if you're a game designer, like the money in them isn't that great. Like the, the money in general in board gaming isn't super and when you get into single deck card games it's even a smaller piece of that. So when I, when I saw Love Letter I said oh I've got a bunch of these and uh, so I talked with them and I said oh here I can mock one up for you. Uh, so I, I made the game up using uh, John and Dinder and Mark Wooten's business cards <laughs> and put, put the game together and basically uh, we, we played a couple of games and they're like oh we like this so it's coming out uh, this year as a game called the current name is Agent Hunter, which I believe is going to be the final name. Uh, it's basically a very quick two-player uh, kind of deduction game where you're competing against your opponent to kind of solve a, uh, a code before the opponent can. Uh, it's a quick game, plays in about three to five minutes. Mike's also designing a game for Queen Games, so we decided to head over to the Queen Games booth, get some information from them, and find out more about his game. We have a couple of exciting games coming up. One is Amerigo from Stefan Feld. We use Dice Tower from Shogun. Yeah, and has a lot of strategies. It's a good one hour play. Release is Essen for this game. Templar that will also release for Essen. And Lost Legend should be out in June. Who designed Lost Legends? Uh, Michael Elliott. Yes. Yes. We yes, talked sir. with Mike a little bit. Yeah. At least we knew it was coming. Correct. And Excellent. when is Lost Legends? Um, it should, we're sending it to printers in end of April. So it should be ready in May. So it'll be shipping out to Kickstarter first. So it should be in the States sometime in July. Uh, well, the the Lost Legends game uh, from Queen Games is coming out. Uh, I think it's now scheduled for June. It's kind oh, of that's right. Yeah. It's kind of slipped a little bit, uh, but that one's kind of a mashup between uh, Seven Wonders and Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, so instead of just having a drafting game, this has a mix of you draft, then you fight monsters, then you draft again, then you fight more monsters. Uh, so it kind of lets you draft and then do something. I, I call it a draft and do something game, uh, rather than just like a drafting game like Fairy Tale or Seven Wonders. Uh, you draft the cards and then you use them to, to kill things, which is always fun. One of the most popular companies on the Kickstarter right now is Cool Mini or Not. They make a lot of miniatures games, so we had a chance to talk to them about some of the stuff they're coming out with. Well, I'm David Dels. I'm the director of Kumini or Not. Um, Kumini has had a banner year. Uh, last time we came, we we're just about ready to do our first Kickstarter. And six Kickstarters later, here we are. Um, we have done many, many games, and we currently have the expansion to Zombicide, uh, Toxic City Mall, and Prison Outbreak right now. The, the biggest thing is, is obviously Chaos Ball with uh, Eric Lang. Uh, 
a uh, fantasy sports game. Uh, we have some miniatures downstairs to show and uh, we'll be announcing more and more stuff uh, with that line uh, very soon, uh, especially at our own Kumini Expo in May. You can come and try out the game. Uh, Chaos Ball is a uh, fantasy sports game. It's a um that I'm hoping will be very, very different from everything else out there. I played a lot. I'm a big fan of, uh, of Blood Bowl and uh, games like that. But this is a this is designed from the ground up. It's not a sports simulator. It's a board game uh, where I designed a, a brand new sport, which is kind of a mix between rugby and uh, the Venn diagram. I've been taught saying it's it's rugby meets uh, to the death or uh, gladiatorial arena combat with uh, cosmic encounter laid over on top. So um, it's. Uh, it's a game where it's not about micromanaging your team on the individual player's level. It's about just getting to the heart and the essence of what makes sports games fun. It's about like drama, back and forth, lots and lots of killing. Uh, it's not a, it's not a family game, um, and uh, uh, you can play league play as well. But basically, I cut, I cut all of the stuff that distracts players from, uh, that distracts players from just getting your guys out there. Um, messing around with the ball, killing each other for points, and um, advancing yourself in the league. So there's, I got rid of all the negative stuff that you have in some sports games. There's no player, there's no permanent injury, no running out of money, no death spiral from start doing badly in the league. Um, the teams are crazy customizable. You get to buy upgrades, from, and you get to put on these cool little magnetic boards and save them. Uh, from game to game, so everybody just gets better over time. Um, there are four teams in the box. Uh, there will be uh, clearly there will be expansions. Uh, I can I've designed 18 of them. Um, there will be a lot of them. I, I don't pretty sure we're not going to launch with all of them, but uh, I've designed a lot of them, and there are going to be uh, quite a few available close to launch. What are these four teams? Uh, there's a team called oh so the IP is uh, fantasy pop culture. Um, so it's all the cool stuff. Uh, all the cool geek stuff that we grew up on. So this team called the Goddardamron Fangs, who are vampire sort of goth clubbers. They're uh, the Amazons, uh, who are um, with, the, of course, with their cool spears. They're models sort of after roller girls. There's a team called the Ogres, who are uh, sort of coin up street fight, uh, uh, street fighter bad guy type uh, team. Uh, and there are the. Um, uh, we just did a couple switches, so I hope I got this right. Um, there's also the. Um, there's the Paragons, uh, who are these archangel, uh, new age type guys with, uh, the, with swords and little third eye thing in, the, in their forehead. I then asked him about Kickstarter. When's it coming to Kickstarter? And then we, we asked him a little bit about basically, did he expect their Kickstarters to be so wildly popular? Uh, we haven't decided. Uh, the, the Kickstarters are spaced out. We do it when we're ready uh, because we use uh, different development teams. Uh, they have different styles. Uh, they have different deadlines. So we, we don't want to impose a a hard date on them so that they must come out with it. We, we're not going to release something until we're absolutely sure that we're ready. You know, in, in business, you, you hope for the best and you prepare for the worst. So sure, we, we anticipated that, you know, it will work, otherwise we won't make the investment. Uh, but whether we'll grow this fast, uh, not really. <laughs> I mean, we've been very fortunate to have so many successful titles, you know, in, in a matter of one year. Moving to a different genre now, we had a chance to sit down with the folks from Columbia Games, known for their war games. So, my name's Grant Dalgleish. I'm with Columbia Games. It's a family business started by my father, Tom, back in 1972, which means uh, we're 40 years in the business now. And uh, my father and I still work together every day, and uh, I love that. It's one of the coolest parts about the business. We're probably best known for the uh, wooden block games. That uh, is, is a game system that my father pioneered back in, in 72 with his first game, Quebec 1759. And we have parlayed that game system into uh, a whole bunch of different game periods, different military periods over uh, the full spectrum of history and uh, still using the same core mechanics that uh, were pioneered 40 years ago with, with some nuances and changes and, and, and improvements, of course. Uh, but uh, that's one of the cooler things, that um, people who become fans of, of uh, the Columbia system will find that their next second game, third game, whatnot, will be 80% already under their belt before they get started. 
And uh, I know that uh, customers tell me all the time how much they appreciate that. This is my friend Justin Thompson. Uh, Justin is the co-designer of one of our better selling games, uh, Julius Caesar, and also my partner in uh, a fantastic game convention in Charlottesville every year called PressCon. Yeah, we've been uh, running PressCon for 20 years. We had our 20th anniversary just in February. It was quite nice. Had about 600 folks. Um, we run board game tournaments. So, like we ran 95 board game tournaments over six days, which was pretty phenomenal. We also run Columbia Con, which is something that Grant has come up with, which is basically a series of games that are uh, based on Columbia Games uh, tournaments and championships. Um, we're also working on a follow-up to Julius Caesar. Hopefully everybody will be excited about that. Uh, a game called uh, Anthony and Cleopatra. And uh, it's the second half of the war. It's going to be a little more detailed, a little more, um, uh, more, and I say this loosely, it's going to be a little more hammerish, meaning that it's going to be a little more, uh, as Cleopatra switches sides, all the vassal kings and things will have a lot more flip-flopping back and forth in this war. But most, mostly face worked on it's going to be working towards uh, Mark Antony's uh, Cle uh, um, Persian campaign. I wish we had had more time to talk to distributors there. They were the busiest people at the convention, talking both to retailers and to manufacturers. But we did have a chance to pin one of them down from GTS. Yeah, GTS has a couple exclusive games. Uh, we have I Am Vlad, which is a somewhat historic version of Vlad the Impaler. And the cool thing about that board game is it's actually made by people from Wallachia, which is in around Romania. So it's actually made by people that, I don't want to say are descendants of, but are from the native land of the real Vlad the Impaler. So it doesn't get any more real than that. And we also have Police Precinct, which, you know, there's not a lot of cop games out there. And uh, it's a semi-cooperative game. It could have a traitor element. And you play policemen running around doing the job of those fine men and women on the front lines. And it's tough. It's a damn hard job. But it's a great game. And now a company making a zombie game that I'm actually quite interested in. Uh, my name is Justin DeWitt. I'm the owner of Fireside Games and the designer of Castle Panic and the Wizard's Tower. I also co-designed Bloodsuckers with my wife and co-designer Anne Marie. She designed Bears. Uh, that keeps us very busy and in staying busy we also make new games. We are working on Dead Panic. This is our newest release coming out in August. It is a zombie rework of Castle Panic and I want to be clear it's not just zombie art on uh, Castle Panic tokens. It's much deeper gameplay than that. We've taken the uh, castle ring and expanded it. It's now a cabin and you actually will be a character, a little figure that has to move throughout the cabin searching for items and weapons. Uh, you'll be engaging zombies and you can only fight what's in your arc. You actually have to move to a new arc. So instead of just playing a swordsman card anywhere you want, you have to have the right weapon that shoots the right distance and be in the right ring. Uh, all the while zombies come in, tear down your walls and try and eat your brains. It really is playing like a night of the Living Dead board game. It's very different. A lot of zombie games are you running through a town searching for supplies or trying to reach some sort of end goal. And this is very Castle Panic. They're coming at you. You have to survive as long as you can. But we're changing the end game. We're putting in uh, uh, survivor tokens. They come out of the woods and they're on your side. They're good guys. They will make their way towards the cabin if you're lucky. Uh, they will drop radio pieces along the way. Get three of these radio pieces together. You can call the rescuers who show up in a van but they stay out in the woods and you then have to leave the safety of what's left of your cabin, make it to the woods and hope you still have all your parts attached when you make it. So uh, some big differences in how it's played. The end game's completely different. The bag of zombies never ends. It's a matter of getting to those rescuers. Uh, it's playing in about the same time, uh, a little longer in some games, especially as we teach people and we're cleaning some of that up to try and get the gameplay to just about that hour, hour and a half sweet spot. It's a riot, it's a blast. We have people on their feet screaming as they roll dice to try and fight zombies because eventually you will run out of guns and you have to bash them in the head with whatever you have left. So it's, for anybody who's ever played Castle Panic, we think it's gonna be that next step you always wanted. If you've never played because it looked too simple, this is probably gonna scratch an itch a lot better. Difficulty wise, I'd say it's near the Wizard's Tower. It's not, we're not going into some super deep complex game, but it is definitely more involved than Castle Panic. It's, it's a really nice 
evolution of the game, I think. We're, we're really proud of it. Can it be played solitaire? That is the plan. We're still tweaking some of the rules because there's a few balance issues, but it's just a question of how much of this and how much of that. So we'll have that figured out pretty soon. We're thinking it's still going to be one to six. We're, to, we're testing the six player thing. We don't see real any big issues yet, but we're going to hit that until we, we're sure it won't break. Um, so it should be one to six players. Uh, we're looking at probably an hour and a half. Uh, MSRP is going to be $39.95, so it's still going to be in that same price range of Castle Panic. It's coming out in August. It'll be our big Gen Con release, so look for that. That's going to be... Uh We'll be hyping that in all sorts of ways. We're, we're hoping to have some costumed uh, uh, booth people and stuff like that that mimic the game. So we're, we're very excited. We have a lot of plans for this game. So. <laughs> I'm Phil Kilcrease with Fifth Street Games. Been doing this for close to two years now. We have a line of six with our sixth one being on Kickstarter right now. We started with Castle Dash and then went through to Crow in the Pitcher. Farmageddon was our first big hit. My Happy Farm's about to come out. Jungle Ascent was our next big hit. And then Baldrick's Tomb's on track to do at least 15,000. So My Happy Farm is the game of stretchy livestock, where you are feeding animals to make them happy. All of them start sad, but you want to make them happy by feeding them their favorite snacks. And instead of just taking the feed card and setting it in a pile, like, okay, I fed the cow, you take it and put it between the head and the tail, so it makes the cow longer. You also flip this cow head from hap sad to happy. And the more you feed an animal, the longer it gets. So you end up with this five length cow and uh, it's pretty silly and ridiculous. Um, whoever has the most points at the end is the winner. Plays in about 20, 30 minutes. Baldrick's Tomb is a roguelike dungeon crawl that plays in about half an hour. Uh, not nearly as mean as roguelikes uh, of the past. What a roguelike is is a randomly generated dungeon that just throws lots of monsters at you and you tend to die a lot. When uh, death isn't as horrible in Baldur's Tomb as it is with old roguelikes, because it used to be, have to start over, too bad for you. But you're just knocked out and you lose half your gold. So it's not nearly as punishing. And there will, will be other modes unlocked as, kick, as over funds are hit as well. Ayala was most well known for King of Tokyo, uh, just how popular that game is. But they have some other cool games coming out. Let's take a look. So I'm Stéphane with, uh, with Yellow, and uh, we are a French company with uh, an office in the, the USA, and we are the publisher of King of Tokyo and Mythic Battles, Uchronia, uh, lots of games from family party games to real uh, gamer game. So just came out is our newest uh, Richard Garfield game, which is uh, Ghost. Uh, it's a little, um, it's a little card game, a lighter game from uh, what uh, Richard has done in the past, but um, <clears throat> very fun um, Halloween type of uh, artwork. And uh, basically, you are trying. It's a, it's a discard uh, card game. You are trying to get rid of your hand of card, but there is a twist because there is a first phase that we call before midnight when you have to exhaust uh, the deck. And then once the deck is exhausted, now you can get rid of your card, which is after midnight. So uh, there is lots of strategy. There is a little bit of randomness in it, but there is lots of calculation about what you have in your hand, what the other player have in their hand. And because there are so much exchange of cards during the game, at one point you know exactly what everybody has, and it's where the calculation can kick in, because you have to really figure out how to get out by forcing the other player to play their hands. And it just released uh, in the USA. One of the games that he announced was really interesting and I want to learn more about it, Titanium Wars. Uh, Titanium Wars, we are very excited about Titanium Wars. So Titanium Wars is going to be a June release. Uh, so that's the cover, we are very proud of the cover. The artworks on these games are, are really awesome. Um, so <clears throat> it, is, um, it is a space opera uh, card game. Uh, it's all card based, so think about Dominion type of game. Um, everything is played with card, but you are not building a deck. You are buying resources each turn, and you are putting them on, on the board as your fleet, uh, because uh, each player is a leader of a, a space planet, and you are trying to collect titanium, which is a very rare mineral in that fictional world. And to do so, you acquire more planets and you buy uh, uh, space vessels and weapons that you can equip on those vessels. And you also acquire uh, buildings that are giving you improvements in your level of technology, in the number of uh, spaceships that you can build, and so on. And uh, you have a, a bunch of um, tactics, 
tactics cards that are determining you, ch it, you use those cards sorry, to choose which action you're going to conduct during that battle. And each card is telling you um, what type of vessel you can use for your battle and what type of uh, card you can target. <coughs> um, so we keep battling until there is one, one uh, winner of the battle and this, this winner uh, win the planet that, was, uh, uh, that we are fighting for. How long is the game? It's a long game. It's a two to three hour game, uh, lots of negotiation. Uh, it's, it's really a gamer game. It's a, it's, it's a, I would say it's at the other end of the spectrum from, uh, let's say, King of Tokyo, for example. But um, again, very beautiful artworks. The game mechanic is very well oiled. We have done lots of playtests. Um, and uh, it has room for expansions also. So, and it's going to release, release at uh, Origins in, uh, in June. And of course, like everyone wanted to know, are there more expansions coming for King of Tokyo? Ah, that's, uh, that's a question that lots of people are asking. Um, we have actually uh, more than one project in, uh, in, our, in our cardboard for, uh, for King of Tokyo. Uh, we have almost too, too many ideas and we are trying to figure out exactly how to release them on the market and which orders and in which media if we are going with standalones or expansions. and So... Uh, the, yes, the, the short answer is yes, there is lots of things uh, following on the, in the King of Tokyo world. Well, that's it for this video, folks. I have a few more videos coming. In the next video, we're going to do the rest of the publishers that we had a chance to talk to. And then the video after that, we had a chance to talk to a lot of these people about the state of the gaming industry, where they think it's at. Then we'll be putting out a video talking specifically about Kickstarter. We've asked a lot of people what their thoughts on Kickstarter were. And then finally, we'll end it about the Gamma Trade Show, why go to the Gamma Trade Show, and a little bit about what the Gamma Trade Show is about. So a few more videos coming. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell, and thanks to Eric Summer for helping me. You've been watching The Dice Tower. Thanks for watching The Dice Tower. Join us next time for more news from the show.